open up, Colorado. It's 420. Time to grind and burn. This is not your son, Stoner Show. Welcome to the Cannabis Community Project with Brainstorm. Once again, bringing you your weekly broadcast podcast from the CCP Studios high up in Denver, Colorado. You're exploring the business side of this newly emerging Colorado economy, focusing on the business, the patient, the user, to the retailer, to the geek in the garage, creating that next innovation in cannabis. This is the first media platform to help fellow cannapreneurs build sustainable businesses while living the lifestyle. Dairy Berry's recording studio located in Arvada, Colorado is your local recording studio with affordable rates. Mark is well experienced and will make your show, music, or any audio you have sound great. He makes our show come across the internet loud and clear every week and he can do the same for your project or band. Take a look at Dairy Berry's recording studio or call Mark at 303-456-8216. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved on National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, the options are endless. Remember, nationalpodcastday.com. All right, sports announcer, basically your country recognizes the principal of what you stand. Sit down. Good morning. Hi, I'm Jim Berry with Weed Wipes. Weed Wipes, the all-natural resin remover, tastes weed, not the resin, not isopropyl alcohol, not chemicals made by Monsanto. It's all-natural, edible. Weedwipes.com. Have you ever thought about doing voiceover work? (laughs) (laughs) A number of years ago, I had several accidents. I had about 15 broken bones, went into medical marijuana, got my red card to smoke. And when I did, I realized after 25 years, nothing had changed in the cleaning industry. (laughs) And what, what is your overall model that you're foreseeing weed wipes taking? Well, as a matter of fact, we've got several avenues, but I actually prefer to build the economy. So we have retailers uh, that are dispensaries as well as smoke shops, but we also have distributors. We work through the distributors so that people in your area can actually have it. How do you manage the actual day-to-day operations of buying products, manufacturing products, and then getting that out the door to your sales and retail people? Well, it's the team that makes the difference. I have a couple of really good guys. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of responsibility, right? Because when you're not paying somebody, it's like, well, I wish I'd rather just pay him because at least then I would have some control over the situation, right? Exactly. There's there's uh, no admonishing like, you anybody. you got to be here at this time. You're going to do this many hours a week. This is what you're going to do. You know, you're a paid position and you have a job description and it's outlined. You know, it's a it's a job. When, when somebody's unpaid, it's always a little loosey-goosey, if I can use that term. Yeah. That's a term yeah. that's I, I may show up. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, everything's a voluntary mm-hmm. uh, basis. I will do this for the time being. I choose to do this, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that's always a struggle. Mm-hmm. I mean, I see where this can go and I see the potential. And you're only a few months in now. Have you been self funding all the way up to this point? Very much so. And that's kind of one of the things that I'm fairly proud of is with just a modicum of money, whatever I garnered from being in government contract sales, I managed to turn this company in six months to being valued at a million dollars. Right. Let's get that uh, sounds nice interesting. Track. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, should we take a bond here? I think so. <laughs> we're all over Facebook with Weed Wipes, and we're on WeedWipes.com. Excellent. Well, I appreciate your time on this uh, lovely Saturday afternoon out here at your home office, corporate office, heart and soul of Weed Wipes. Thanks for inviting us out. Thanks for coming. This has been wonderful.
This show is streamed live from CCP Studios, but we can also do it via Skype, phone, and possibly some other technology ways. Let's just get you on the show. So if you have an idea, you have a business, maybe a product you've been thinking about, contact me, brainstorm at CannabisCommunityProject.com. Herb Box is an independent, organic company bringing style and class to the cannabis community with an exquisite, superior, handcrafted, medical, and recreational container for the consciously cultural professional and the stiletto stoner. Visit our website at herbbox.com. There, you can see our magnificent boxes, read our blog, sign up for our future newsletter, and inquire about any future career opportunities. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook. Once again, we would like to thank you. Cheers! Soon at the CCP store. Indeed, you'll love it. <laughs> Tchotchkes are bought in the millions, and even though you're only getting a penny or two every time, that's millions of pennies, and that builds right. up. Okay. A storm is coming, Frank says. A storm that will swallow the children, and I'll deliver them from the kingdom of pain. Cannabis Community Project, and I'm Syndicate with Cannabis Community News, and what we're doing is currently a couple of little interviews in the round where I'm talking to various cannabis and just people who are interested. Who am I talking to right now? My name is Stephen McMorrow with Cannabis Clean. You've got this great cleaning business where you're helping to keep these grow rooms sterile? Yeah, they're not sterile now, but and that's what we're trying to do. You're going to make it. We're trying to help in the, the industry to get to that point. We want to, we started this business with that in mind, that if growers need this to be sterile in the future where protocols need to be met, they can just call us and we'll have those protocols that we can get it to them. So it kind of takes it off of their plate. And we kind of start with them from the beginning. Right. That as they build out a grow, cleanliness is in mind. Absolutely. And it's from day one, they start with our process, which once we treat the services, it permanently inhibits bacteria growth. And we also have continual maintenance uh, from then on in the grow rooms that we can continue that clean service. And like, did you say education? You have to teach uh, the yeah, staff we, yeah, we'll teach things? Yeah, we teach the staff just how to continually clean it. Also, we're going to provide them with products as right. well um, in the meantime. And then every 90 days or so, whatever we work out, we can come in, make sure everything's clean, test the walls, make sure everything's, uh, you know, the uh, shield is still there and it's effective, and then wipe everything down just for continuing maintenance. Oh, that's great. Yeah. great. I can see a total growing need. I mean, there's so many places out there, and uh, yeah, yeah. you got to keep that sterile quality up, and like you're saying, uh, if it's medical grade, it's got to be treated like medicine. So and, and that's what we're saying. If you're, I mean, anything you have in the public where they're ingesting it or you know rubbing it on, or making edibles, and different things like that, it's going to be going into their body. Could be medication or food or anything. It's got to be clean. Absolutely. Cannabis industry should be no different. Um, we're dealing with medicine to patients, whether it's for somebody who has is dealing with cancer or epilepsy, like myself. I'm epileptic. That's why I got into the business. So somebody who's just using it because it just makes them feel a little bit better at the end of the day. That's self-medicating. I think yeah. it should not be uh, seen as anything but that. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with it. And that, but they should ins- be ensured that what they're having is clean and safe. Yeah, and highest quality. Yeah. It, it, it's a win-win all around. If it's clean, then the growers don't have as many headaches dealing with crop loss due to mold and mildew and different things. And then the patients are uh, have a better peace of mind that they're no, they know their cannabis is, is much cleaner and safer. Oh, absolutely. Here's a fun fact. I love this. We are back.
back at David Love, Colorado. It's here in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, upstairs from the animal hospital in the law offices of David Bush. Once again, following up with his in-depth knowledge and information about the hemp industry and most things cannabis related. Last time we talked a bit about a legal development in the state of Colorado. There was a bill that was passed that did a few things, a major ones that it authorized the Department of Agriculture to develop a hemp seed certification program. What I thought we could talk a bit about this time is there are a number of proposals in Congress concerning marijuana, but because the definition of marijuana is so broad, they affect hemp. Their classification is a little less science-based and more like a six-year-old that's just looking at something and saying, that looks like that, it must be the same. That's right. Yeah, well, that unfortunately is the, the sorry history of cannabis, is that you take a plant that looks like cannabis and it's judged to be the evil weed no matter what's in it judge a plant by its cover, I guess. That's right. You can't tell. That's the wonderful thing about cannabis is it's remarkably complex. There's hundreds and hundreds of cannabinoids. One happens to be THC Delta 9, which is the stuff that gets you high. It's almost laughable, kind of in an absurd way to, to even hear that. Like, yeah. So yeah. Really? Our whole life is based around this type of equation that, that somebody's putting oh, yeah. together? So, yes, another excellent source of information is uh, me. My name is David Bush. My law firm is David Law, D-A-V-I-D-L-A-W, davidlawcolorado.com. Very good. Well, as always, I appreciate your time, and we'll have to check in again. We'll do another little update. My pleasure. uh, We'll we'll speak to you again. Yeah, yeah. Think about empowering yourself and being about this community. We got families, we fathers, we mothers, we you know, we we taxpayers. We you know what I'm we're not just bums out here. We're not just lit by in the basement. So I thank you and I appreciate it, man, and peace to everybody out there. Love. One love. I wanna make great music, not fight a war. How does overseas? Killing sprees, solve anything. Hackers make millions versus the homeless, missing dinners, ex addicts, alcoholics, single mothers, old business owners with bad decisions who couldn't pay their taxes. People who fought for this country, if that's what we call rich men in power, fishing, feeling empowered, never have to lift a finger, pull the trigger on the guns and bullets they find. But we can enlist your daughter and son to fly to Baghdad, empty clips, body bags in Iraq. We spilling foreign. Children blood, same color as the American flag Red rag, red, red wine, red rum Christians ask me if I'm ready for Jesus to come Scriptures predicted this part to answer your question I don't think none of us saw I think this generation is something the population God should have forgot More than half of this population forgot about God No respect or regard for human laws who is this policeman to put me in restraints and metal bars? Who is a judge to give me time where I can barely budge? Soldiers on your lieutenants, who invented this? Listen to your generation-ish. My elders is in this mediation therapy session. They giving suggestions. Should I take it when they sound foolish? I'm still newish. On my money like I'm Drake and Jewish. Are you really that awake and clueless? Well... If it makes me famous, then it makes me dangerous. I'm a 90s baby with no medication, that's dangerous. Cancerous, don't dance with it. Even if it makes you famous, that's dangerous. They won't make me famous. That's dangerous, can't sell my soul, that's dangerous. Builds furniture in his garage and gives it to military families in need. Now he could be forced to shut down the sauce. and then donating to military this. families in need. But now his homeowners association is telling him to stop. My name is Michael Magliotti, and I'm with the Medical Marijuana Mafia Association. It's a nonprofit foundation I'm trying to start to help get like-minded people together to help stop in marijuana prohibition. Perfect. And I love the name. Where did you come up with this name? Because it's definitely, it's a catchy type of name, the Medical Marijuana Association. What is the relationship or the background to that? Basically, my whole life, I've been accused of being in the mafia. Since my last name is Magliotti, and a few years ago, they named 
came to Street After My Family, and then I got on Facebook and started doing some research and found out I have relatives in Italy. And so one day in 2010, after being accused of being in the mafia six times in one day, I decided, screw it, I'm going to start my own mafia of like-minded professionals that are all about helping people and care about any marijuana prohibition. Cool. So you just took a, a catchy name and something that people had been, you know, trying to paint you into a corner and you're turning it around into a positive, into the cannabis industry. What part of the country are you located in? I'm in Phoenix, Arizona now, but hopefully soon be able to move back to my hometown of Atwater, California. And is this organization what you're expanding, kind of your main focus right now? Right now is trying to work on ending marijuana prohibition and legalizing industrial hemp. My family owns some farmland in my hometown of Atwater, California, and they could be millionaires if they could grow industrial hemp and start helping save the planet. So the MMJ Mafia is about ending prohibition and promoting hemp all at the same time? Yes. Is this an organized type organization? Is there chapters and weekly meetings? Or is this more of an organic, uh, virtual relationship with people? Well, basically, it's it's an idea that's in my head right now that I'm trying to get like-minded people together. Eventually, I'd like to have state chapters and have it be a lot like the organization of, called Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Okay. Well, that's a good model to set itself against. What are some of the activities you do to actually go about ending prohibition? Try do rallies at state capitals and educate people that senseless they outlaw the plant that God put on this earth and don't think it should ever happen in the first place. And by the time people hear this, you'll have actually completed a successful rally or an event um, last Friday that you put together. Uh, what was that event about? It's just about any marijuana prohibition and trying to raise awareness about the benefits of industrial hemp. Okay, so there wasn't a specific bill or a measure or ballot that you were promoting. It was a general awareness of prohibition. Correct. Okay. And are these things that you have people come down and hold signs and march and chant, that type of rally? Exactly. What has been your interaction with the police around this? Are they receptive? I know Arizona is a little different than Colorado, but Arizona still is a medical state, correct? Yes, it is. I truly believe they will uh, legalize marijuana here in 2016. Okay. So coming up just next year. What type of reaction do you get from local city officials and the police around you when when you're engaged in these activities? Well, amazingly enough, a lot of them are really starting to understand the benefits of medical marijuana and how industrial hemp can help save our planet. A lot of them will not go on record saying that. They are giving positive feedback and understanding that it's a plant that God put on this earth and it should not be outlawed. What is the genesis of this movement? Have you always been an activist? Are you involved in the industry as a retailer or a grower? Where is your motivation coming from? Well, back in 2008, a friend of mine that uh, worked at an animal rescue shelter part-time and was helping patients with their medicine was caught by the police and was looking at 15 years in prison. So it kind of lit a fire under me to kind of help pass the medical marijuana initiative that was here in Arizona at the time. So in 2008, I really started connecting with people. I was in the process of kind of building like an Angie's List type of referral service for the cannabis industry. And in 2010, my son started having epileptic seizures. So I went to Colorado to find out if it was a viable treatment for my son and found out about the book called The Emperor Wears No Clothes, written by Jack Herrera. Read the first four pages and couldn't read anymore. I got so upset that a bunch of rich politicians and businessmen were able to outlaw a plant that got put on the surf and really just kind of lit a fire under me to want to try and change that and make a difference. So prior to your your son becoming sick and your friend becoming under legal scrutiny, you were not involved in the industry yourself? No, just as a user. Just as a user, okay. And are, are you coming from a standpoint where you believe just all around national legalization should take place, recreational or medical, or are you just focusing on the medical aspect? Uh, I think recreational and medical should be allowed. It's like I said before, it never should have been outlawed in the first place. It's a lot safer than alcohol. People go out and drink every night. I don't know how many billions of dollars it costs the industry that, you know, for people that are dying and healthy health issues and traffic violations from drinking alcohol. And it just seems ridiculous that something that is so detrimental to the public is legal, but something that can help people live a more productive life and less stress and less pain uh, is illegal. And I just boggles my mind that that's the case. How is your son doing now? 
Well, to be honest, I haven't talked to him in a couple of years. He lives with his mother. He's 19 years old, and you no know, teenagers. They kind of think they know it all. Hopefully soon I'll be able to reconnect with him and find out how he's doing and rebuild the relationship that we once had. At the time, though, when you were with him, giving him this cannabis treatment, what was the effect? Was it creating a positive effect physically? Oh, very positive effect. He went six months without a seizure after I got him on the treatment and um, help him focus a little more to not have seizures. Yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, there's a lot of stories coming out about that, and that's why more and more people are moving to Colorado. Is California, where you're wanting to go, have a similar legal structure like Colorado, where you'll be able to engage in the industry just as openly as you would here in Colorado? Yes. For years, I've been working on a retail store called the Hemp Mart which be, would be like a cannabis shopping mall, self-contained, where a cannabis user could go get their hair cut and get a massage and anything that service that they would like to use it would all be in a one-stop shop. So it would be like a big trade show, like a flea market of, of hemp, where a bunch of booths and kiosks come together into a single marketplace to individually sell their, their retail products? Yeah, basically like the Denver Mart. And yeah, same setup as the Denver Mart. Okay. And for those who are not in Denver, it's basically uh, what some people might refer to as, you know, flea markets or swap meets, uh, big, you know, big parking lots where people individually rent kiosks, booths or tables to sell their individual products in one location. Very successful. Nothing negative about having an open mart. Probably going to be an interesting collaboration to see how to actually join all these businesses together and have people start to collaborate together, especially those who are clearly on the hemp side and those who are clearly on the uh, the marijuana side of things about joining, you know, splitting those lines and, and joining forces together. Is this all under the name of the MMJ Mafia or are these separate little projects you're thinking about? They're separate projects that I'm working on. Okay. I actually have several projects that I'm working on. One of them is basically I own a network on a web broadcasting association called onnowtv.com. Each one of the businesses and organizations and projects that I'm working on will have their own little channel. Yes, and this is similar to a YouTube. I signed up for it the other day to check it out, open a channel. I mean, it looks very cool, and I look forward to seeing that grow and expand and how it's going to turn out. It's a combination of YouTube and Facebook with a lot more bells and whistles. They're working on an IPO similar to Skype where people can actually talk to each other through the channels. There's a lot of bells and whistles that I can't talk about yet, patents that are pending and should be uh, getting launched to the world hopefully at the end of September, first part of October. And it's going to be exciting what it's going to do. Technology of the future where the businesses are going to connect with consumers on the internet. That's definitely uh, what we need is physical interaction and virtual interaction brought together. Now, just to clarify the the MMJ Mafia, is there a website where people can go to, to learn more about this or to find out if it's something close to where they are that they can join or get in touch with you? Yes, it's www.onnowtv.com forward slash 213. That's my channel number. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the channel, you'll see a website that I'm working on called Godfather of Cannabis. It's an idea I got while I was in jail for a traffic ticket one time, and my cellmate was in jail doing 14 months for two joints. So I thought that was just insane, and so i trying to start this website to raise money to help people that are in jail for nonviolent crimes. Okay, I understand, but let me be clear. Is that, the, is that where people go to learn about the MMJ Mafia, or is that where they go to learn about these other issues? MMJ Mafia channel has the website at the bottom of that channel. Okay. So, so if they go, go to... to RNLTV.com. Is there a domain, though, called MMJ Mafia or anything like that, like a .com? The domain is godfatherofcannabis.com. God, okay, there we go. Now people know where to go to, to get in touch with you if they want to talk to you or to learn more about what's going on or to maybe even join uh, join with what you're doing locally, either in Arizona or in California where you're getting ready to go. I'm also looking at some projects up in Oregon where I lived for 25 years and going to be going up there in the next 30 days, hopefully, and starting some business uh, ventures up there. And had a lot of irons in the fire. And yeah. Just could really use some help from the general public to help raise awareness and 
take some of the load off me to uh, get some of these financial things that I'm working on to so I can start helping people that are in jail for not violent crimes and raising money for them. Yeah, that, that sounds like a lot of irons in the fire. How do you actually manage that on a weekly basis? How are you able to give attention and time towards each of the projects to move them forward with so many going on? Well, that's part of the problem. I'm not able to devote the time and energy I'd like to devote to each one. So it's why I'm asking for the public's help to get involved. If there were one organization that you had to focus on and leave all the others behind, which idea is it that you would look at as being your main idea? MMJ Mafia Association. That would be the main one. And I agree. I think that that would be a good one because it involves collaboration, getting people together, and working towards good causes, which is always a good thing to do. And hopefully through that type of collaboration, you'll meet some people who can help expand into these other businesses. Do you have a crowdfunding campaign or any way of raising money that you're doing right now? Um, Not at this point. Um, something I'm looking into. If uh, you need any help on that, just let me know. I've, I've done a few of those in the past. I could help you out on just, you know, letting you know exactly how it works and that process and everything else. And there's some good websites out there for crowdfunding in cannabis, which are better than others. Kickstarter right. would not be a good site to use for cannabis-related campaigns, as Kickstarter has some pretty strict policies. But Indiegogo doesn't. I do have a GoFundMe account that I started. I was trying to raise money to get up to Seattle Hemp Fest back in August. That GoFundMe account is still up there. It's GoFundMe.com forward slash get Mike to Seattle. <laughs> it's still going right now? Yes, it is still up and going right now. And have you successfully got any funding to get you closer to that goal? I think it's about $215 right now and not as successful as I thought it would be, but unfortunately I'm not very technology savvy, so I'm not aware of all the avenues of being able to get on the internet and help spread the word. And with so many projects going on and too many irons in the fire, and I really need to start focusing on one thing and MMJ Mafia is going to be that focus for me. Absolutely. I like that strategy you're taking. I think that will work. And, you know, 200 bucks, that's, that's, that's nothing. Nothing to be ashamed of because it's money people are giving to you to support your cause. And if nothing else, it'll it'll help pay for the gas or at least a a couple meals along the way. Right. Exactly. What else can we give the audience so they know where to find you or just what this is about before we wrap up? What do you want people to do? Um, Basically, I'd like people to check out the onnowtv.com forward slash 213. Medical Marijuana Mafia Association channel uh, that has all my contact information. Be happy to post up any videos of businesses that are like minded that feel the same way to advertise for them. One thing that Mr. Holschel, the founder of On Now TV, is going to do is one of his networks is called Healthy Home Television, and he wants to help legitimize the cannabis industry by giving manufacturers of cannabis related products actual certificates that they can put on their products saying that they're healthy home certified, whether it be hemp food or medical marijuana. He's passionate about uh, helping save the planet as well and people's health, and that's why he started Healthy Home. Do you know that 50% of all illnesses in the world are caused by poor indoor air quality? Yes, and that's something Mr. Holschel is very passionate about. Many years ago, his daughter started getting ill one night and couldn't breathe, and so he started doing research, traveling all over the world, finding out that it was the indoor air quality in his brand new home that he bought. So he became a custom home builder in Oklahoma, and he owns the trademark Healthy Home Association. And so with that, he's willing to help, like I said, legitimize the cannabis and industrial hemp industry by helping people get the certificates that they need to help educate people about the benefits of their products. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And uh, I, I use air filters in home, and uh, I'm, I'm a little aware of the issues of poor air quality indoors. So I think that's a great idea. And it could definitely be an idea that can overlap with many, many hemp products also in the actual construction of homes from hempcrete all the way down to other items. So there's a lot of crossover in, in products and ideas that can be used there. Yeah, there's, there's nothing healthier than building a home out of hemp. Yes. I've seen straw straw bale homes built. I understand the concept of that. So I imagine hemp can just be that much better 
considering the product itself. Very cool. Well, Michael, have we hit on the main point of the MMJ Mafia? Because what I would like to do is see if you would be interested in making some t-shirts using that name and selling them on my online store because I think the name itself is cool and I think some some very interesting designs could be put together using that MMJ Mafia type taglines. Make some apparel, sell them in the store, and try to help you raise some money through the sale of t-shirts. It's funny that you mentioned that. Just a couple of days ago, I went on Facebook and trying to do a graphic artist contest. The logo for the MMJ Mafia, it's I've had so many people over the last seven years I've been doing this tell me that uh, I can't use that name. It's so derogatory and it'll turn people off. <laughs> it's made me even more passionate about wanting to do it. People oh. telling me I shouldn't do it. The oh. logo of the Medical Marijuana Association is going to be senior citizens using walkers and canes, disabled vets in wheelchairs, and children in hospital grounds dragging right. IV bottles. All like cartoon characters. Those people that are giving you that advice of that that's a bad name for t-shirts don't quite understand merchandising it's a bad name maybe to register your company with but as far as making t-shirts it's the best name that you could possibly have Uh, we're not talking about the name that you're registering with the state uh, to get a business we're not talking about the name that you maybe put on your business card as you're going into meetings we're talking about making t-shirts and t-shirts is not about what's clean and cut and and non-offensive t-shirts is about what looks cool and what sounds cool with phrases and taglines and the mmj mafia is a great tagline now regardless of whether or not that's the name that should be the name of your company that's a whole different discussion so people that are giving you the this advice are not they're not separating the the issues here. I agree. If that's the name you wanted to register with the state, I would say, let's rethink that. But as far as making t-shirts, there is no better name than the MMJ Mafia with some cool graphics put on a nice black or white or, you know, green t-shirt designed by a skilled artist. That's what I'm talking about. So if if that's something you're interested in, uh, let's let's, uh, figure out how to get those designed and printed. And then uh, I'll post them on my store on my webpage on the Cannabis Community Project webpage store where I have other products such as apparel and and music and items and paraphernalia listed. We'll list your t-shirts and when people buy them we'll give you that money to help towards the uh, organization and the cause. That'd be awesome. Perfect. Then let's do this. Let's keep this very isolated to this one topic. Just a short little segment about this. I'll get this on the air. And then in a few weeks, maybe, you know, a month or a little bit more, then we can do another little segment about a different little topic, you know, one of your other irons in the fires. And that way it doesn't get real confusing on on air when people are listening and they just kind of hear single topic for topic. If that works for you, this works for me. I'll edit it. I'll edit it down to about 15, 20 minutes. Take the best of the best make sure everything sounds good put it up on a segment on the show and drive some traffic towards your website that'd be awesome so let's just wrap this up so thank you very much Michael Migliotti Mogli Mogli <laughs> sorry as Mogliotti I, Mogliotti there we go as I think I told you previously I have, a, I have a friend here in Colorado whose last name is Gilotti in my head I was getting those a little confused thank you very much for coming on the show and talking about your organization the MMJ Mafia let's one more time give out your contact information so if people want to get a hold of you and talk more about this with you maybe they want to volunteer maybe they want to donate some of their skills to build a facebook page for you or help you out with the website what is the best contact information for you the best contact information the way to get a hold of me is go to www.onnowtv.com forward slash 213 it has my phone number it has my email it has my linkedin page my facebook page links to that that's just a one-stop shop for somebody to reach out to me and leave their ideas, comments, suggestions, and whatever they're passionate about. I'm more than willing to listen to other people's stories and helping them get a channel or post up one of their videos about whatever they're passionate about. So like I said, it's www.onnowtv.com forward slash 213. Excellent. Thank you very much. And we will make sure to be back in touch with you for another update shortly in the future. Thank you for your time and allowing me to tell my story and try to raise awareness and get the story out there to the world. Cool, man. So. 
that, that's a, that's about that's about uh, how it works. And then, uh, like Sounds I said, great. in the future, we'll just do another little segment about another little topic sometime down Maybe the line. We can just do an update on how the uh, the industry's going and how things are moving along with the association. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Sounds good, man. All right, brother. All right. Have a good week. Take care. Bye. We'll talk soon. Thanks for listening to this week's show. Make sure to come back next week. We're going to have more guests lined up speaking with dispensary owners, growers, business owners. Make sure to follow us on all of the social media, Facebook, Google+. You can listen to our shows live from the website or your preferred listening platform. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, even YouTube, all under the same name, CannabisCommunityProject.com. We'll see you next week. Come on!